All right, hey, how's everybody doing? Uh, I asked you guys to submit some questions on Instagram and YouTube, and you guys did. You guys sent me over 70 questions, something like that. So I'm gonna start doing these in smaller segments so I can answer everybody's question in better detail than trying to fit them all into one video. So the first question I'm gonna do for today comes from, <laughs> I think the, yeah, on YouTube, uh, the screen name is Ron Burgundy. That's a super good name. Uh, where do I live? What's my favorite color, and have I ever kept a Mississippi map turtle? Um, so, I live in Georgia. Um, my neighbors are going to start up a blower while I'm trying to record this. And uh, my favorite color, I don't have a favorite color. I wear a lot of black. Sometimes I like red, but I don't really have a favorite color. And have I ever kept a Mississippi map turtle? Of course I have. I have a, a female Mississippi map turtle, and then I also have a female false map turtle. They're very similar, and uh, I'm going to show you those right now. All right, so this here, this is my Mississippi map turtle female. Um, she's, you know, she's about half grown. These guys will get about uh, between eight to 10 inches as adults. And she's about a seven inch turtle. And as you can see, she's, you know, pretty typical as far as Mississippi map turtles go. She may have a little bit of false map turtle influence because those little crescents behind the eye. Uh, normally those crescents go all the way around the eye and with her they have a little bit of interruption in there like you see in false map turtles but you know she does have the the round irises uh, she does have all the other characteristics of you know that group of map turtles so uh, really neat I actually like these guys a lot they're readily available in the pet trade uh, you'll often see these guys at Petco PetSmart um, and when you get once you get them adapted they do really well sometimes it's touch and go in the beginning um, because usually they're not kept very well especially in in those stores so uh, for me i find that they just they do the best outside uh, just like all my turtles i once you put them outside they just really seem to take off and uh, they really behave like an actual map turtle does you know she swims along the bottom and she's eating little clams and crayfish and snails and you know i chop up pieces of shrimp and throw that in there so She's a, you know, a basking, predatory, carnivorous turtle. And she basks and hangs out with all the other turtles. There's no aggression. She gets along with everybody. Uh, just a great turtle. So that's my Mississippi map turtle. Look at that face. You gotta love that face. They are super cool. Look at that. These map turtles will actually grow a large head similar to uh, some of the other megacephalic map turtles. And um, that usually happens with, you know, the onset of age. Uh, hers is starting to develop, but she won't get much bigger for several more years. But um, I do love those goofy eyes. All right, so the next question comes from Ken R on YouTube, and he has two questions. Uh, question one, people often write on Facebook, turtle forums, that their pet turtle or tortoise loves being held or loves walking around the house. How would you know whether a turtle is loving the moment versus being stressed out? And there's it, that's a very good question because I see that a lot. I see a lot of these people where they take their turtle and they put it in a blanket and you know they lay in bed with it and they think, oh, my turtle loves being in a blanket, laying in bed with me. And it's like, well, does it really like that? Or did you kind of wrap it in a blanket and it doesn't really have anywhere else to go and it feels enclosed so it's not going to move? Hard to really say. Um, I don't think most turtles would come running out of their pond or their enclosure to kind of have that moment so I tend to lean on that being something that's kind of being forced upon the animal because the person enjoys it versus the, the actual animal wanting to seek out comfort. Reptiles aren't really like that. Um, neighbor's blower is going again. <laughs> Thanks guys. Uh, so they're not really going to seek out that kind of uh, affection because reptiles just don't function like that. That said, 
I do have like a yellowfoot tortoise. She's actually right there. And she will follow me around the yard. Uh, one time she got out of, a, out of our yard and I had to drive around the neighborhood and I was freaking out. And I pulled up at a neighbor's house and she was in the front yard. And as soon as I pulled up the car and I got out of the car and started walking towards her, I saw that she recognized me and she made a beeline straight for me. So I do think that turtles are capable of knowing who we are and recognizing that and knowing that they're the ones providing food and providing shelter and that I think somewhere in there there's an appreciation for that. But I really don't think that there's uh, much as far as affection goes. That, you know, there are some tortoises that enjoy neck scratches and physical touch, but um, as far as being carted around the house or put in a pool or something like that, I think that's a bunch of kind of a little bit goofy to me. Um, I think that's more for the person than it is for the animal because it just isn't what these guys naturally do. So, yeah, that, that was a two-part question. So that was kind of a long answer there. Um, the second part to his question is, is it best to handle a turtle as little as possible is it best to handle a turtle as little as possible to avoid unnecessary stress? Uh, I agree with that almost 100%. Um, I do have turtles that I do touch and interact with a good bit. Um, a good example of that being like, um, sorry, let me fix my exposure. So that's a good question. Uh, I do have turtles that I regularly touch and interact with. Um, mostly my tortoises um, and I'll just kind of walk over to them, give them a little scratch or you know kind of a little pat on the shell and they're they seem to be pretty used to it uh, but there are certain turtles that just they don't appreciate physical touch and I, I just don't bestow that on them you know um, there's not much point in me you know chasing around my loggerhead musk turtles to handle them every day or it's soft shell or something like that that's just not going to enjoy it um, and I think you do run the risk of stressing them out uh, that said, there are people that like to use like uh, feeding containers. So they do, every time they feed their turtle, they do pick it up and put it in a separate container. So the turtle does become accustomed to that handling and they kind of start to know the drill and they start to know that once they get handled, okay, I may be getting fed or maybe getting you know, a water change or something like that. So I tend to err on the side of not handling a lot. I just don't really see the point of it. I mean, it's fun to handle turtles, but I would rather have healthy turtles that are relaxed and enjoying life. So uh, that's just my opinion. Um, ultimately, it's whatever you want to do, but I recommend doing whatever makes the animal happy first. All right, thank you for your questions. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for watching this video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I will answer more questions uh, sometime next week. So see you guys. Stay inside. Don't get sick. Bye.